All right, my presentation's gonna be a lot shorter than Michael's. Um, <laughs> I hope so. A lot shorter. And it's all about, yeah, all, it's all about styling web components with Palmer. I'm gonna break it up into two sections. So the first section is all gonna be all about styling your very own components. And then the second part's gonna be about theming and customizing existing components that other people have written or other people's components. And, you know, for the most part, when you first start out, you're gonna be using a lot of components that other people have written, in particular the core elements and the paper elements by the Palmer team. And you're gonna be making tweaks here and there to have it fit in with your existing web design. So I'm not sure how many of you are here are actually designers, but I guess it would help a little bit just to know how to make things a little bit prettier than what they are. And so I'm gonna do everything live, and I'm gonna be using Ellie. And for my first example, I'm gonna just talk about styling your own component. And we're gonna basically just style a standard UI button, similar to a bootstrap button. And if you used bootstrap before with a button, you know that it has different states, and the difference between each state is that it has different background color. So you have a primary state, a default state, of course. The primary state is like a blue background. Success state is a green background. Error is red, and so on. So we're gonna keep it really basic, and I'm gonna start writing an inline style tag right here, and you've seen this in Michael's example, so you're pretty familiar with this by now. You can either write an inline style tag, or you can link to an external style sheet right in here. So if you have a lot of CSS in your element and you wanna keep things clean and organized, you can use a link reference and keep it more tidy that way. But for this example, we're just gonna write inline style. And I'm gonna start off by using the host pseudo class. And Michael kinda used this in his example. And basically what the host pseudo class does is just colon host and allows you to target the actual element right over here, the DS button. And just to make sure things are working, I'm gonna do this real quick, this display inline block, border 2px solid red. Have it update. Okay, so it is working. I want to take the host pseudo class one step further, and I'm going to wrap a selector inside of it because I want to be able to check to see what the type is. I want to make sure this is type equals primary. Then I want a selector for success, and so on. So what I'm going to do is use an attribute selector and type this out. And what I'm doing right now is something called scope styling. And what scope styling is is it's basically complete encapsulation. So any CSS I write inside the style tag, none of it's gonna leak out and affect other elements on the page. Nor will any external CSS that I write outside of this element definition, none of it's gonna bleed in and affect the, uh, the template DOM. So all of it's completely encapsulated. So I'm gonna start off and I'm just gonna change the background. Oops, not there, I'm gonna make sure I target the button. So I'm gonna change the background of the button and I'm gonna make sure that whenever a type is specified, I'll just change the color to white and copy this, paste it, and change the background color for each state. So it's pretty straightforward. If you want to do everything directly in CSS without JavaScript, you can just check the host element and style things that way. So that's probably the most important thing you need to know when you're styling out your own elements is just the host pseudo class. That's the biggest thing. So other other people's components. Well, no, for like your component, you were saying that instead of putting it all. Oh, uh, do you do it? You yeah, you have a separate style sheet, and you'll just do something like this. But you'll put it in. You'll do it like that, but just that style sheet for that component. Right, right. So you typically have it in the same directory. It'll be like the, like for this one to be like ds dash button dot html, and then you have a ds dash button dot css. So pretty straightforward stuff. So that's the first thing I wanted to cover, and there's only a few more of the things that you know you have to know when you're doing your own component and styling it. And that's the, uh, there's another pseudo class called host context, and that allows you to look up the DOM tree and check over the existence uh, of a certain class or another selector. So say you had a container div or a body class like green theme. So if I had a div over here and I did green theme, it allows you to check up the tree outside the element to see if something exists. And then I could turn all the buttons completely green based on the context, which could be potentially be handy. And the last thing I want to cover is the content pseudo element. Michael's about to get into that, but I stopped him. <laughs> right here, inside of my template, it's just a button tag. That's all there is. But you have this content tag because we want to be able to inject certain things. Like the user writes HTML right here. It's going to be injected into here, otherwise known as the light DOM. But let's see what happens if I try to style the italic tag that I specify right here, or the B tag. I try to style and change the color to 
to red. It's not gonna work because I've, I'm not piercing through right here. It's still black. I'm not piercing through this content tag and getting to the light down to style thing. So what I have to do is do colon colon content and that changes the color to red. So that's basically all there is to it when it comes to styling your own elements. You have the host to the class, you can wrap selectors inside of it, you can use the host context to the class to check for the existence of certain classes or other selectors up the DOM tree, and then you also have this content pseudo element, which makes things a bit easier. And one other thing I'm going to cover when it comes to doing this is how easy is it to, oops, what happened to my own? Okay. Is how, how easy is it to do responsive design? And the cool thing is with Palmer, all you have to do is you can do all of your media queries directly in here. And you'll see if you know if you look at the source of a lot of different Palmer elements by the Palmer team, you'll see that they, they actually write media queries directly inside to build responsive elements out of the box. So for this I can just do I can do I have a breakpoint at 480px for a mobile device, and I can make my buttons full width when I'm on the phone. So that's media queries built in, and that's pretty nice. Another thing you might want to do is use something called, I'm not going to do it right here in this demo, but you might want to take advantage of an element called core media query. So let's say a good use case for that is, say you had a horizontal menu at the top, like a navigation menu with eight links. And on desktop, you'd see all the links you know, in a horizontal row. But when you collapse to a mobile device, you want to change it to like a hamburger style icon, and you tap it, and the menu slides in. So you might want to have different, you know, different markup for each, each scenario. And Core Media Query allows you to take advantage of, you can actually use multiple templates inside your element definition and have one template show up at a certain breakpoint. So if I'm on a phone, I can show a template just for the hamburger icon and the slide in menu. If I'm on you know, a full resolution screen, I can just show like an unordered list with a horizontal list of links, which is really handy. So that's all there is to um, installing your own components. And the next thing I just want to cover is a few basic concepts behind theming and customizing existing components. And usually my workflow for that, I mean, just styling Ellie, what I did was, you know, Michael and I threw on some elements all over the page. We used some of the paper elements provided by Palmer. And once you do that, you'll notice that it's styled the default, you know, material design that Google provides you. But say you want to tweak the colors and change the backgrounds and all that. What I basically did was I had my own style sheet because what I don't want to do, I don't want to have to go into every single element by the Palmer team and change the inline styling. That's a hassle. I just want my own style sheet with the list of tweaks here and there. And I want to be able to write my own selectors. So what I do is I have my style sheet on the side. I go into Chrome, open up the inspector, and I just look at the shadow DOM to see how these elements are created. So I can inspect like the link up here. I'm going to see if I can make this bigger because it's not that. <laughs> Definitely not that. All right, I like the side view. That's my preferred way. You can. Okay, cool. Okay, so I just like to, when I was, you know, first learning how to use Palmer, as a designer, I wanted to see how do, how do I actually style and get into the shadow DOM, but I'm not, you know, in the inline CSS, I'm not in the definition making changes. Is it possible to pierce through the shadow DOM and write selectors so I can style this stuff. How can I change this span right here inside the shadow DOM for this paper button to like something like red? And it's actually pretty easy to do. And there's only one thing you have to pretty much take out of this when you're theming and customizing other people's stuff. And that is the shadow pseudo element. So you can actually pierce through the shadow DOM and change things. But just, I'm going to see, let's see what happens if I try to do it without that. I'm going to just do nav, paper button, and then span and then color red. It's not going to work because it, it, everything's encapsulated like I told you. You can't get through the shadow DOM unless you use a, speci a special pseudo element to do so. So I'm going to do colon colon shadow and that way I can pierce through the shadow DOM. And that's all there is to it. You just use this colon colon shadow to get through into the shadow DOM of anything you want to do. And so I take the selector, I go back into a text editor like Sublime Text and update my style sheet and make changes from there. It's that easy. So that's the one thing I want, the main thing I want to show you. But there's also something else that cool that you can do to make like global theme changes across the entire page. There's something called a deep combinator. It's just forward slash deep forward slash. And what that allows me to do 
is I can pierce the shadow DOM of all the elements on the page. So instead of having to write a selector for every single element, like say I wanted to change the color of the paper button and, and some other stuff, like I have a ton of different custom elements in here, but I don't want to have to write selectors and tweak every single thing. I just want to make all the text on the page red for no reason. So what I'm going to do is type body deep, and then I'll just do an asterisk just to show you guys how things work. So with this, with this deep combinator, I'm piercing into the shadow DOM of every single element on the page. And it touches everything. So that's it. I think the main takeaway is, is definitely, you know, know how to use your host pseudo class. If you're providing, so if you have, you're used, taking advantage of the content tag, then definitely remember to use the content pseudo element. And then for installing other people's stuff, just remember to use colon colon shadow to pierce in the shadow dump.